Aging Communities. I'm your host, Nancy Bocci. With me this morning is Lisa Robinson, Director of Shape Up Somerville. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. It's great to have you today. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. We are going to talk about the Mayor's Wellness Challenge, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about your background and what brought you into such an interesting position with the city. As we know, you've been on a little bit better than a year now. Mm -hmm. Tell us what drew your attention to this at first. What made you want to be a part of this? Sure. So I um, have been in the nutrition field for about 15 years, um, primarily as a registered dietitian, and I've been doing a lot of um, like one-on-one -on -one, uh, interaction, talking about um, health and wellness with patients and um, clients in all sorts of settings, in the healthcare setting, in um, clinic and research in the community. And in interacting with people, I realized that a lot of people value health mm -hmm. and um, pretty much know, you know, to eat their fruits and vegetables, you know, to drink water, things like that. But there's a lot of um, challenges and barriers in the way. And so I felt sort of helpless sometimes in a hospital setting or in a um, research setting. And mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, do something more in the prevention role rather than the treatment role. And um, this opportunity came up about a year ago. I was working at Boston Children's Hospital, and it seemed like the perfect opportunity to be shaping the community um, mm -hmm. in a way that it helped uh, where the healthy choice, you know, people defaulted to that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also a Somerville resident, so it's just another way to be involved in the community and, you know, be um, helping with the health of my neighbors. Excellent. Um, as we know, the history of Shape Up is long and varied, you yeah. know, how it initially came about with the focus on childhood obesity, mm -hmm. and then has really shifted its <laughs> focus in areas of concentration, like you said. I think now there's so much in the news and so much more information available that I think people consistently make healthier choices when they have options without right. really thinking about it necessarily. Sometimes it's just, it's kind of become so integrated into everyday lives and mm -hmm. we hope to have it more fully integrated. Yeah. Uh, the people are just making healthier option choices. And it's nice to see that and the impact on an individual and the ripple effect out to their families, friends, the community, and then really Massachusetts as a state. Mm -hmm. I mean, Somerville as a city we know has increased its walkability, bikeability. Mm -hmm. People are just really active everywhere we look throughout the city. So it's really a nice um, varied background you have to bring to this role. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been it's great to come into the community and see all the work that's already been done um, and just figuring out, making sure that everyone's aware of the uh, renovations, the updates to the city to make it a healthy city um, and make sure everyone's using it. And again, mm -hmm. um, making sure that everyone in the city's um, utilizing in a way that they can reach their fullest potential of health. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I like the way you spoke about renovations, too. We've recently upgraded different parks and mm -hmm. open spaces. Uh, as I was leaving my office today, I stopped to talk to a young family that was visiting Chucky Harris Park for yeah. the first time. Yeah. And we're just, they're new residents to Somerville and just were really amazed at the vast amount of what we do with such a small space, how it feels like you have a lot of different opportunities to utilize areas. So it was kind of interesting to have that conversation right as we were coming to this. So. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about the Mayor's Wellness Challenge today. The challenge yeah. has existed in the past as a fitness challenge yeah. and has transitioned this year to a wellness challenge. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the importance of changing that. Okay, so yes, it's we're in the seventh year of the Mayor's uh, Wellness Challenge and from you know, feedback within the community and with colleagues, we were thinking, you know, rather than have it just be a fitness challenge, we want it to be a whole body approach mm -hmm. and real uh, focus and attention on that. So. Fitness, you know, we're, we think typically of just physical health, but we wanted to encompass um, mental health as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and healthy eating, of course. So we figured that, you know, rebranding it to the wellness challenge would really um, convey that change and uh, change in focus. Mm -hmm. And we have the nice bag here, the Mayor's Wellness Challenge, yep. with the 95210 logo. Yes. So this is a real chance to help educate the community about this. So I'm going to leave it to you to explain sure. 95210 and potential ways to kind of implement that into your lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. So this was really great timing. We, um, Our partners over at the school and at Cambridge Health Alliance, um, we were looking to uh, do some new health messaging. Mm -hmm. and. What's been popular in other communities has been uh, 5210 messaging. So we've uh, upgraded that to 95210. And so what that stands for is uh, nine out, aiming for nine hours of sleep a day. And just to back up on that, that's seven to nine, aiming for seven to nine hours of sleep for adults, eight to 10 for children, mm -hmm. uh, five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, two hours of recreational screen time or less, at least one hour of movement, 
and zero sugary drinks, and we added nicotine onto that for the wellness challenge. And just simple, uh, sort of simple rules, I'll say, to try to aim for. And we know that, the, you know, not everyone's going to hit that every day. That'd be, mm -hmm. you'd be superhuman to do that, really. <laughs> but trying to break it down, the Wellness Challenge was an opportunity to highlight this new um, messaging and help people start thinking about it, start a conversation, um, and help people think about what they want to work on and set some goals to achieve, you know, one of those habits. Mm -hmm. And the Wellness Challenge is six weeks, so you could either stick with the same, you know, habit every uh, week or you could change it up. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that I was really happy to see on this was the two hours of recreational screen time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, as we certainly know in society, there are advantages to that feeling of always being connected and having the most recent information at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. However, we know so much interaction using online platforms actually increases the feelings of isolation with individuals. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's really finding that balance. And I mean, you know, I think it's a more realistic goal to achieve as opposed to saying like there's no screen time or you know putting I'm thinking of young people and putting parents in kind of like the overseer role of you know right. having to manage that but yep. I think really when you look at all the numbers and the ways that you can make these small changes it again you're not asking someone to you know just stop something that they really enjoy it's mm -hmm. just understanding that moderation plays such a role in things. Yep. The other thing that I love absolutely is that they're so intertwined. Mm -hmm. So how screen time, often we bring our you know phones to bed or we're having mm -hmm. at our bedside and it affects our sleep. So how those mm -hmm. two connect, how um, being physically active or moving around more also helps with sleep, um, you know, it mm -hmm. sort of all connects, it's great. Now for my own purpose, the five has been consistent, the five servings of fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. that has been in play for a number of years, yeah. correct? Yeah, um, that's sort of a, a minimum. We also say there's, sometimes people throw out five to nine. Okay. Um, but we thought that five was mm -hmm. a good place to start. And you know, a serving is really not too hard if, you, if it's a half a cup of mm -hmm. cooked vegetables or a cup of leafy greens or you know, like a small piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. I think now too, you know, as you said, the timing really came together for the kickoff of the challenge and in a minute we're going to look at the clip of that. But to realize too, it's kind of springtime mm -hmm. and while knock on Formica, <laughs> uh, we did not have too bad of a winter this past year. Yeah. It really does feel like today, you know, it's beautiful, it's going to be 70 degrees outside. So I think it's a nice time to start implementing some of these as well because yeah. you're out, so you're potentially moving more. Mm -hmm. So that kind of also plays into you'd be using less screen time if you're out doing more activities yeah, very true. people are able to utilize the upcoming mobile market which we can touch upon mm -hmm. you know getting out it just seems a little easier at this time of the year to just try to make all of those changes mm -hmm. yes it's just that it's the time I think everyone's feeling like they want to like open the windows dust off their sneakers and their shorts <laughs> yeah. and get outside um, and so it's an opportunity just to provide a little more motivation and inspiration for that um, to talk to your neighbor and say hey what are you doing you know I'm challenging mm -hmm. you to this what are you doing just a friendly competition mm -hmm. um, and then also again increase awareness of what is already available in the city mm -hmm. um, to take advantage of often their um, you know free resources or um, wellness related businesses that people mm -hmm. might not be aware of, the challenges and opportunity for that. Um, and then also to continue the conversation about how as the city we can be, you know, supporting people in mm -hmm. their health and wellness, you know, goals and endeavors. Excellent. I think too with the upcoming season, you know, there's a lot of outdoor activities happening. You know, yeah. we had the city clean up yep. uh, a couple of weeks back and, you know, just again, ways for people to get out and re-engage and you always... I find it interesting to see people who are coming together and it's almost like we've been in hibernation. Yeah, you know, you come true. together and it's like, oh, I haven't seen you. And then you realize like, so maybe really in the winter, you know, <laughs> you're, you're kind of maybe giving a quick wave to your neighbor, but it's negative 10. You're not stopping right. to really find out what's going on with them. So it's really nice to kind of have the rebloom of everything like to that, tie yeah. into this. So each year, typically there is a kickoff event yep. to start the challenge. Mm -hmm. And we had it held this uh, past April 24th. Yep. Um, in conjunction with the Shape Up Summer Bowl Recreation Road Race, which was happening too. So yeah. again, people really getting out and utilizing the outdoor space. So we do have a clip from that. So we're going to take a moment and take a look at that. Okay. Throwing 
covering our kickoff event today, which is kicking off the six-week challenge. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of great activities here. We have the box program, which is a before-school um, activity program. We've got Zumba happening. We've got lots of other nonprofits doing health screenings and information about health and wellness. And it should be a really good time. We're looking Hi, I'm Miriam. I'm from Teen Empowerment. I'm a youth mental wellness ambassador. So what we're doing here is we're trying to destigmatize mental health and we run workshops to um, give people a place to talk about mental health and good coping strategies. So come by. Thank hey, you. I'm Paul Fomenke with the Boston Kickers. We had the Mayor's Wellness Challenge. Um, we at Boston Kickers believe that kids need to be active and fit and healthy to be happy. And we do that through soccer. We coach kids from the ages of 3 through 18. And uh, we're here working with a few kids, helping them improve their footwork, helping them improve their, their movement. Uh, and we, just, we just want them to be happy with the soccer ball because if they're happy and healthy, everybody's better off. Okay, so that was nice to just kind of get a little bit of a flavor of what the kickoff is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for some people it really is something they look forward to each year to just be like, here's kind of the start of it, mm -hmm. to get out again, reconnect, find out resources. So I think the tabling that happens there is really important. It yeah. gives our community partners, who are always very supportive, the opportunity to meet new people. Mm -hmm. And again, I think you can't overemphasize the importance of understanding the resources available in your community. Yeah. And when we look at Somerville compared to other cities in our region, we have so much to offer. Mm -hmm. And like you said, as a resident, I know we feel a little bit, you know, sense of pride about that. And then working for the city, that also increases that feeling. But really, when you just kind of do a laundry list of what we offer to the community mm -hmm. for free or very low cost or mm -hmm. the ability for scholarships or sliding scale funding, yep. it really amazes me. So I think, again, the opportunity to highlight our partners who have all of these amazing informational resources and opportunities coming up that people may not be aware of, it's really a great way for them to promote what they're doing. And, you know, we had some of our usual favorites there, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we had parkour, which has definitely increased in popularity over the years. Uh, the first time I had heard it mentioned, I will admit, I had no <laughs> idea what it was. Uh, so I watched a video, so a little bit of screen time to yeah. find out what that was. But really, you know, it's just a really great way to get out and experience the outdoors again. You know, Cambridge Health Alliance that you had mentioned, such a strong community partner. Yep. You know, there are just so many different opportunities. Valaris, which is always a crowd favorite. Yep. You know, just again, understanding there are different ways to be active. And that's mm -hmm. why I really think switching it from fitness to wellness was so important because mm -hmm. You hear fitness, and I mean, I think, all right, so I'm fairly active, but I'm not really fit, you know? I mean, so kind of what does that, how do I connect with that? But when I hear wellness, I mean, everybody wants to choose to be well, mm -hmm. right? So if you're able to provide information on how to be well, how to make choices that can potentially impact your overall wellness, I yeah. think that's a great opportunity. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, we had, it, it was a great opportunity to connect with some businesses that I had not met um, mm -hmm. yet in my position, but we had Kenko Do doing um, free massages, which was mm -hmm. really popular. We had someone doing, um, in addition to the self-defense from Valaris, we also had, um, 
uh, someone doing Zumba. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just a good opportunity to yeah. try new, you know, activities mm -hmm. that you might be intimidated to try or, you know, don't really want to spend the money on a mm -hmm. class first and then find out you might not like it. So, right. Yeah. It is. It's just those different opportunities because, again, you know, some people may want to do Zumba, some people may want to do yoga. Right. And I think, again, incorporating the mental wellness is so important. So, how did you, I know you said you received some community feedback mm -hmm. and suggestions from colleagues. But how did you see that as being a critical part to incorporate? Um, it just c continues to come up as a really important part of overall wellness. So mm -hmm. again, if we're not feeling mentally well, you know, first of all, we talk about like, you know, relaxation, mindfulness, and mm -hmm. how that really taking a moment to pause can really help with all of our decisions mm -hmm. um, that we're making and um, down the road. And if we're care caring for people, that also helps from a mental wellness perspective. So we just. Um, thought that that was an important mm -hmm. piece of it all um, and connecting again to the other health um, behaviors that we do connects mm -hmm. back to to that piece. Excellent. We're also hearing too, you know, anecdotally from community members who are considered now, I guess, the sandwich generation, which are, have children right. that you're taking care of, but you're also in a position of uh, providing care for aging parents. So yeah. that sense, as we all know, whether you're a parent or a caregiver in any form, it really, you know, it places a burden on you, and mm -hmm. it's a burden that people willingly embrace. I mm -hmm. don't mean it like that, but it's still that sense of when you're consistently putting someone else's needs first, right. you're the one who gets shortchanged. Mm -hmm. And I think helping to raise the awareness of that, and I think people are more open now mm -hmm. to the suggestions of realizing that if you're not in a good place to take care of yourself, you're really not providing great service to other people. So I think, again, understanding that as you said, that need to take like a mental pause mm -hmm. and just, you know, kind of refocus and, you know, take yeah. a short walk, any of those different options, but whatever works to kind of recharge yourself yeah. so that you're back up to 100% and then you're able to really be the most utile to all of the other people in your life. Yeah, so true. Absolutely. Um, the challenge, as you had mentioned earlier, is going, it takes place over six weeks. So mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about ways people were able to get engaged at the beginning and mm -hmm. how they can get engaged now that, the, that it has begun mm -hmm. and what's going to be kind of the culmination of it? Sure. So um, the kickoff event was a great way to engage everyone, again, connect them to uh, wellness-related businesses and also sign up for the challenge. But you can also um, you can sign up at any time. Mm -hmm. We are um, having people report their points on a weekly basis. So you can jump in at any point and uh, start accumulating, you know, achieving your goals, accumulating points. Um, and then we're doing a full, you know, grand prize at the end of the six weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we will be celebrating the winners in a team capacity, so the you can participate on a team of five or uh, participate as an individual, and the top prizes um, will be given out at uh, Carnival on June, it's that Saturday, June 4th. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really excited because Talia Tringo is going to be sponsoring uh, five $25 gift cards oh, for the top um, individual scores. And then Assembly Row is uh, donating uh, $30 gift cards to the top five to each person in a team of mm -hmm. five. Excellent. So that's really exciting. Um, but now, in addition to signing up, uh, one thing that I think is really neat that really highlights, again, what a great city we live in is that we have a calendar on our website of all these existing activities that are going mm -hmm. on and they encompass anything from volunteering so like the cleanup day you mentioned mm -hmm. or volunteering for the memorial day parade to um, activities that are going on in our parks mm -hmm. um, and when I put it together and we send out you know a weekly reminder mm -hmm. and updates you can see that there's basically something that you can be taking advantage of Monday through Sunday mm -hmm. so maybe like five out of the seven days a week so that's I think great. that's really neat um, we have a wellness buck um, that you can see on our website that, again, connects, you know, some generous sponsors like Gentle Giant Rowing, Rowing Club is offering outdoor rowing on land um, mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays for the entire challenge. So it's a great opportunity, again, to see if you're interested in rowing, just to enjoy our waterfront, remember mm -hmm. that it's there, um, socialize with other people, mm -hmm. um, and have a good time. Excellent. I want to go back a little bit to the goals. As we said, uh -huh. we talked about what the 95210 is. How are people, what guidelines are you providing to help people establish goals or mm -hmm. suggestions? And how is, what are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. So the guidelines are, again, it's, you know, we call these our daily habits, the 95210, and saying, okay, set up to three goals that you'd like to, um, to help you get to that. So for example, mm -hmm. um, I had a baby about six months ago, and I'm 
hardly moving these days mm -hmm. or you know in a different way so uh, my goals are to walk to meetings it's so easy to get in our car and drive to meetings walk home from work some days and to try some new class you know exercise classes again Great. taking advantage of our uh, wellness buck and so anytime I achieve those I get a point and so you can accumulate points you know for each goal you achieve on a daily basis and then when you attend those uh, community sponsored events that I mentioned those are five points so mm -hmm. Um, our top winner last week, I think, had 28 points. So nice. that's been our top score. Yeah, it is, you know, the goals really can be what best suits your lifestyle. Exactly. You know, again, the, again, the emphasis on wellness. I mean, so mine were to try to walk every day, which, you know, I know you walked here today. <laughs> <laughs> to the day I drove. Um, but it is that sense, you know, it helps me refocus during the day as well. So, you know, at mm -hmm. lunchtime, I try to very deliberately leave my office mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, and it's hard for all of us to disconnect from what's going on, but, you know, it will still be there in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just get out. And again, I like to go by Chucky e. Harris Park because, you know, it's a nice outdoor space and just kind of walk around the neighborhood that my office is in. And when you come back, it's like, okay, so I did, you know, I feel better about myself because it's like, okay, I've worked on, you know, one of the goals, but I also just feel like, sit back at my desk and it's kind of you come to it with a fresh mindset again mm -hmm. because it's just a little bit it's just a few minutes but it's enough to change your perspective sometimes mm -hmm. absolutely fresh air and a reboot that's great you had mentioned uh the gentle giant options i want to talk a little bit about the dancing in the park yes yes so um <laughs> Again, this is a great opportunity and a great timing of events where the Wellness Challenge and we had received a small grant from Mass in Motion to try to activate our parks more, make mm -hmm. sure that they're being utilized um, for everyone and throughout all times of day. So we um, have a dance instructor who does multicultural dance, so mm -hmm. from compa to um, to the electric slide. Yeah. <laughs> and people from, everyone is invited, um, but people from the Council on Aging have been coming and uh, dancing outside in the parks and mm -hmm. it's so great that we you know have the music up and mm -hmm. it's a really good time and it's uh, a five-week series so our last day will be Monday in two weeks the 23rd. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice option though again and getting people to utilize our outdoor space I had thought of that when you mentioned you know the waterfront people realizing we have all of these great opportunities in the city, so yeah. get out there and use them. Exactly. <laughs> so you had mentioned the wellness buck as well. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that, if you wouldn't mind, about sure. some of the offers available. Yeah, sure. So we've got some great offerings on the wellness buck. Um, a lot of wellness-related um, businesses have uh, donated either discounts, so um, either to a yoga class, uh, B Yoga in Union Square has it's a five-dollar yoga class. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a partner over at the Homeless Coalition, Dave, is uh, doing Zumba every yeah. Friday. Right, for $2. he had done the demo with the kickoff. Yeah, that was really great. Yep. And um, again, Gentle Giant is having offering two things. One is the uh, rowing, mm -hmm. um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but they're also having a discount if you wanted to uh, learn to row. They have a mm -hmm. five week series, I believe, and you can get a discount on that. Um, Capoeira, which is a uh, Latin, uh, I want to say it's sort of like a everything kickboxing yeah, and dancing it's like a dancing and martial rhythm. arts yeah martial arts yeah. it's very interesting it to was, see that yeah. they um that was really neat to watch at the kickoff event they have um they're offering a discount for their class the Somerville yeah. Boxing Club is a uh, offering a uh, discount as well or I think a free membership week long, week -long membership, membership. Yeah. the Y is offering a free long membership yeah. what am I missing uh, Royal Bengal is an Indian uh, restaurant mm -hmm. that is offering a discount on some of their uh, shape up approved mm -hmm. uh, healthy restaurant items and all of this information is available on the city's website there's yep. a direct link to that so mm -hmm. are people able to print off the wellness book on the website or can they come to your office they could come one? to my office yeah they can um, they, we have it listed, but the actual buck mm -hmm. that we're have, encouraging people to use to redeem it um, mm -hmm. is in the bags. And okay. people are welcome to swing by, sign up, and get a wellness buck. Excellent. It really is, you know, a nice opportunity. And I do want to pull one thing out sure. of here, which we hadn't talked about, but yes. we're really seeing utilized so much. The adult coloring options now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the library has um, had some right. adult coloring events in the evening and mm -hmm. people are just really excited about that mm -hmm. and it's such an easy way to incorporate a relaxation technique into your life and when they first come out I was kind of like oh 
coloring books for adults. <laughs> and then I, um, um, I actually purchased one for my adult daughter, and she left it in the dining room. And I was like sitting down, like doing something. And I just kind of like picked it up, and I was like, oh, this is kind of like, you know, it was fun. And it's again, it's just that shifting your focus to something that almost becomes mindless, mm -hmm. you know, like after a difficult day or a busy day right. or some other stressful situation, it's nice to just have something that's kind of simple and again, just resets yourself. So mm -hmm. I think for everyone to take advantage of all of these opportunities, I think is just so, so important. Yeah, absolutely. So are there any last thoughts you want to encourage people about participating? Um, I would just say, yeah, it's not too late to participate. You can, uh, uh, visit our website. You can send me an email or give me a call if you want to learn more. Um, and if again, go into the website just to see all the calendar events that are mm -hmm. going on and hope to see you all out there. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on, Lisa. Thank you. As always, I'd like to thank the production crew, Joe Constantine and Steve DiCarlo. We'll see you next month. Thanks for watching.